Hello everyone, I'm very excited and honored to welcome one of the professional animal training world's most inspiring and influential teachers, Dr. Susan Friedman, to this channel to talk about how behavior works. Dr. Susan Friedman is a psychology professor at Utah State University who has pioneered the application of applied behavior analysis ABA to captive and companion animals. ABA, with its roots in human learning, offers a scientifically sound teaching technology and ethical standard that can improve the lives of all learners. To find out more, check out the description below and visit behaviorworks.org where you can find amazing courses such as Living and Learning with Animals for Professionals, which I've taken myself and I highly recommend, and Living and Learning with Parrots for Caregivers. Now these courses, I believe, are a must for anyone interested in professional animal training. Without further ado, here's Dr. Susan Friedman on how behavior works. Good morning, Emily, and all of your awesome followers and learners. Um, I'm Susan Friedman, and I am a behavior consultant. My specialty is, is learning behavior, and I work with dogs, and I work with zoo animals, and I work with children. And what is most exciting to me about this planet is not only the great diversity of all the different species, but the great similarity, the great, um, the ways in which we, we are all the same. And because we typically keep our filter on how we're different, um, we often miss that there's so much in life that is cross species, and we can use that information to help all of our learners, whether they're children or, or animals, non-human animals, or neighbors or partners. Um, it's just an awesome planet. So Emily asked me if I'd be willing to just record something about what we call the ABCs, the way that we capture the relations between the environment and what we do. So I decided on this rainy, cozy day in my gorilla sweatshirt, just off script to talk with you for a few minutes about how the relations between behavior and environment help us understand why animals do what they do and how we can help them if we need them to continue doing what they're doing or to learn new things. So when we think about uh, I think the first step in understanding how behavior works is to just stop for a moment and enjoy an evolutionary picture um, that brings us to this behaving mechanism that we have. And I often ask my audiences, what are eyes for? And they'll yell to see. And what are your ears for to, e to hear? What are your legs for to walk or to run? But when I ask, what's your behavior for? there's cricket silence. All you can hear is the crickets chirping because we're not fluent in thinking about, in knowing about, being aware about uh, what behavior has evolved to do. And so I think having that pointed out and having that in the front of our understanding is helpful for all the care and training that we give animals. I would say that from a behavioral perspective, behavior evolved uh, to give us an operating system, a way to, with our own power, influence the environment that we're living in. So behavior is to operate in the environment. And we ask operate to what end? And that would be to gain valued outcomes and to escape um, punishment and aversive outcomes. So for me, that's always the beginning point of my understanding is that behavior is like any other evolutionary adaptation. It was selected naturally over the eons to serve a function that helps us not only survive, but also to thrive. And that function that behavior serves is to be able to act on the environment, to move it in ways that protect us and reveal 
reinforcers, meaningful outcomes from behavior. With that in mind, then, we think about the way the environment selects for behavior within the lifetime of the individual, of the learner. And for that, we can think about um, observing all the influences that come from the environment before the behavior happens, and then all of the influences that happen because the behavior occurred, that happen after it, the consequences. So we can think about these small behavior units, not because we think that behavior actually occurs in these independent tiny units or that the big picture of thinking behavior and emotions and, and all the other things, genes um, and behavioral health and so forth aren't important, but because it makes a very useful beginning point. And then we can build out from there. So let's take a look at what we are describing. Perhaps we have an animal who runs out the door, dashes through the door. Of course, we don't want our dog to do that because there could be danger. They could be running out into traffic or they could be running out into the face of a, of a bear or something. It will be safer and more productive if the dog wants to sit at the door or stand at the door until we say, okay. And that way we can keep them safe and um, behaving to live another day successfully. So how do you teach a dog who is already reinforced, who's already dashing through the door because of the freedom and uh, different activities outside that support that choice to make a different choice instead? And what we can then envision is the ABCs that may look like this. You and the dog go to the door. You, as an antecedent, what happens before the door dashing, open the door. The behavior is the, door bolt, the dog bolts out of the door. And the reinforcing outcome, the outcome that is the purpose for darting out of the door, is to quickly get to all the different enriching activities that are available in the yard, in the garden. So that helps us understand that the dog is not darting out the door because it is, it, it is lacking impulse control or because it is dominating you or because it is uh, reckless. The dog is darting out of the door, given the signal, dart now, the antecedent of opening the door, and the consequence, being free to explore all the different enriching things outside. Now we can ask ourselves, what, what do I want instead? What do I want the dog to do instead? Well, the antecedent cue can be the same. We walk up to the door, hand on the knob, open the door. I would like the dog to stand and wait until I give a cue to go out the door. So I have to ask myself, since the dog controls its own behavior, the darting out or the standing and waiting, but I can control thoughtfully the antecedent and consequent environment, how can I engineer a different set of antecedents and consequences to change that dog's behavior? So I might do something like, go up to the door, put my hand, hand, door, my hand on the handle. Um, when the dog comes up beside me and is standing in anticipation of darting, I may start giving the dog treats for just longer duration of standing. And then I may throw the treat rather than just handing it to his mouth. I may then start to toss a treat for standing which will reset the dog and give the dog practice coming back up to my side and standing in front of the door. And then I may do that again with my hand on the knob. I may do it again, twisting the knob, reinforcing the dog for standing, tossing the treats so they come back to the stand position, open it just a crack 
close it, reinforce standing, and you get the idea. A graduated sequence that leads me towards the end goal of an open door, a waiting dog. And then I have to ask myself, what are the prerequisite skills? If the dog comes already knowing how to stand, I'm just giving the information, use the behavior you already have in the situation in front of the door. But now the dog needs a new, a new behavior, which is to run out only on cue. So I might teach the dog to stand in the living room and then go and toss the treat. Stand in the kitchen and reinforce standing and then go in the kitchen. Now I can bring the two behaviors, the two ABCs together. I can go to the door, reinforce the door for stand, dog for standing, open the door and then say, go. The dog runs out and then I send the food or the treat or the Frisbee or the praise in that direction. So I purposely decided to just uh, be off script and just talk about um, very casually how the ABCs help us understand why an, a, an animal does what it does is related to the consequences. When an animal is likely to do it is related to the antecedent signals. And then how to ask ourselves, what do we want to do instead? How our power to influence behavior comes from influencing the environment, not forcing or commanding the dog. The dog is responsible for their own behavior in the environment we've carefully uh, engineered, set up. And then a very rough sketch of how we might implement that kind of program. Once we understand the dog needs to know to wait at the door and then to go out the door on cue. So I hope that's helpful. I find it awesome and amazing and delicious to talk about behavior. Um, I could do it 24 um, seven. I hope that this has been a fun and interesting way of looking at behavior for you too. And most of all, empowering. I hope that it's helpful and useful. Happy training. Bye. Don't forget to check out the written description below for more information on Dr. Susan Friedman, as well as links to a wealth of information on scientifically sound and ethical animal training. I suggest following the Behavior Works Facebook page because there are posted amazing, superb examples of animal training at its best. So I really enjoy that Facebook page and I just wanted to let you guys know about that. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. See you later.